Hi, this is Chris Okolsky, and I'm going to be starting, uh, starting a new series here um, on mental disorders and mental illness, and, and also just some um, uh, issues that relate to emotions, too. I'm going to, I want to bring out um, anger as a side note here, quick. Um, anger can turn into rage. Rage can turn into violence. Uncontrolled anger issues. Um, it's borderline here again. A lot of these are borderline mental illnesses. You know, some people would say the anger is a mental illness. Um, um, I kind of, I mean, in terms of uh, psychology, it wouldn't be probably classified as that. But it sure borders line, borders on not being able to control your world, which that's what mental illness is kind of defined as, is that you're not able to function in your world. And anger into rage can kind of lead to that. So... I want to touch on this. Um, I'm trying to touch on some of the, um, a few of these lighter ones um, before I get into more deeper and more debilitating mental illness. Um, anger, I'm going to start with five. I may have five steps for this one. Usually I've been doing four, but this is definitely five. Um, anger is rooted in unforgiveness. Okay. Um, it starts off with unforgiveness because of the fact that anger is usually... It, they say is a is a, um from a blocked goal okay so when you feel like somebody's blocking you you get upset at them any anger or frustration or anxiety or things that you can't control and you withdraw from that is depression so if you blame yourself it's depression if you blame others it comes out as anger okay that's why unforgiveness is the root of a lot of that okay you're blaming somebody else, you don't forgive them, you're upset at them, okay? Because they thwarted what you were trying to do. Or you are upset at the situation and you're angry at God or the situation, but usually the situation leads you to other people or God. Well, for me, in my instance, a lot of my anger is towards God. I think I found out later I had anger, I had a lot of anger, but it was like covert. I didn't know it was anger, but a lot of what I did was, uh, uh, um, a, a covert way of dealing with trying to hurt others or trying to manipulate others because they I feel that they hurt me and didn't know that and so I was using my behavior as a way to manipulate my world and get people the way that I think they should be and it was wrong and I see that now and God showed me through his Holy Spirit through Holy Spirit counseling which me and Kristen are offering to um, anybody that's listening on our um, YouTube video here or on Facebook. And if you need some more help than we can give you on this, on these um, brief um, um, YouTube videos or on Facebook, um, then you um, definitely reach out to us because we're really trying to help people through the Holy Spirit. Um, he's our counselor. He's our director. And, and we're trying to get it so that, that people can... Um, really be free and actually can get their direct counseling from the Lord because that's what we all need as strong Christians. And so um, that's our goal. Uh, that's the only thing that really works. Um, it kind of reminds me, I, we were talking about Kristen, uh, my wife, is that it's kind of like the story that if you give a person a fish, you feed them for a day. But if you teach them how to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. Okay, same thing with counseling. If I, we know, if we can show you, direct you to the Lord and how he can heal you and how you utilize the Holy Spirit and how you make, allow him to change your heart, you are set. That's how I'm, I'm, my own life has been that way. Now I've been seeking God and asking from how can I be healed? And he showed me now and that I just got to live it. But at least I'm, I know where to go now. I mean, I know the steps. I know what he's desiring of me. I just have to live it. And for the longest time, I felt like so in the dark and counseling was not helping. Christian, non-Christian, any kind of Christian, any kind of counseling was not helping. I'm going to help a little bit, but now realizing who the true counselor is and where direction is, is it's Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit. Okay. So anger is rooted in unforgiveness. Two, forgiveness is not weakness. Okay. People with anger problems one of the challenging parts is seeing as forgiveness as a weakness. Now they might say, I don't I can forgive people. 
The problem is, is that it really is true. And it really is true. If you can really forgive people, then you would not be upset at them. But many times is that they do something wrong again, you get mad at them again. Okay. If you're really learning how to forgive on a consistent basis, it wouldn't be the first thing you thought of is get back at them because your tendency is to not forgive them. When you're trying to get back at them and get mad at them and say, you should pay, you should not be doing that. Stop hurting me. And you're getting all angry. Even I mean, my wife, you know, I, a lot of my angry issues is because towards me, her or she towards me, it's because we want the person, other person, the other, our spouse to stop hurting us. Stop it. That's, you know, if you don't stop, I'm going to make you pay. That's basically what it comes down to. Okay. That's where anger comes in because you're getting frustrated and upset at them to continue to hurt you. Okay. So forgiveness is saying, I know you've continued to hurt me, but I continue to forgive you. But l please, you know, let's work through this. Let's see where, you know, the issue is here. And then going to the Lord and being, and letting him t heal you in the midst of that. That's the whole answer. The answer is you get God. God is the one that can heal you from, from all the hurts and pains you have in your life, even from your spouse, even the closest pe people in your life. And so forgiveness allows you to not be controlled by them and saying, God, I forgive them. It's okay that they hurt me. Isn't that sound crazy? I want, it's okay if they hurt me. It is, can you say that? It's okay if people hurt you? Because you can't, that's an issue. Oh, come on, Chris. People shouldn't hurt you. Yeah, they shouldn't, but they do. And there's nothing you can do about it outside of God. Okay? So if you can say with a pure heart that it's okay for people to hurt you, then you're in the right place. But it's when we challenge that, that we have problems and then we get into anger issues, okay? Or we get into depression because then we feel like we should be able to do something about it. There's nothing you can do about it. People will continue to hurt you, okay? And it's okay because we have a God that's so loving, super loving, that love, you know, covers a multitude of what? A multitude of mental, mental, uh, uh, Helps you mentally uh, help. Oh, okay, I think mentally chastise somebody else. <laughs> no, love helps you to figure out a way so you're not hurt. No, it covers a multitude of sin. That's what it does. It covers a multitude of hurt. Love does. Love does that. How does it do that? I'm not really hundred hundred percent sure, but I have a good idea. It does it by saying that. You're special. You're amazing. And you are the greatest person ever. And you are. Because there's only one you. And I know that sounds maybe cliche. But it's true. God needs you. That's why he created. He created every single person. He knows every hair in your head. He doesn't know every hair in your head just because he's God. He knows every hair in your head because it matters. Everything matters to him. He knows everything and he is aware of everything because if he didn't know everything, then something would get screwed up and he'd say, oh, I didn't think of that. Oh, shoot, that person died. Oh, no, that person's got an illness. Oh, no, he broke his leg. Now I can't use him in this area. That's how stupid that is when you think that God isn't aware of everything. He is and he understands and he knows what's going on. Okay, so he can take care of everything. He can take care of that person. He can take care of you. And so we can forgive people and he can take care of us. He loves you that much that he knows everything about you and he wants to just love on you. And you're special for it because of that. He wants to make sure that you're, as a strong Christian, as a child of God of his, that you're going to continue to do what he wants you to do. Okay, so to do that, you have to receive his love. And how special you are. And how much he cares about you. Despite all this other stuff. Whatever people are saying and doing to you. It doesn't matter. It, sh it, it shouldn't matter. Even though it does, it hurts. But God is saying, it's okay. I've got a plan for you. And I love you deeply. Deeply. Okay? We just have to push into that. Because 
Remember, God is the one that loves, and He's the, that love covers all sins. Not our own, not anger. Forgiveness does, because forgiveness allows us to not be controlled by that, that hurt and say, I forgive you, I let that hurt go. I'm not going to blame it on you. I'm not going to sort of control you. I'm going to look to God. I'm not going to look towards you. I'm not going to look towards changing you. Because unforgiveness is trying to change that person. Trying to get them to not hurt you again. But that's not going to help. That's not going to work. Forgiveness doesn't do that. What does unforgiveness do? It causes you to get bitter. Tars, you get, tars, start, gets you angry. Causes you to get resentful. Then it you know, goes the whole line. Hatred, anger, malice, rage, murder. What does it say? Jesus says, if you have hatred in your heart towards somebody, it's like committing murder. It is. If there was not laws against murder, you killed people. I've even felt it in my own heart. I'm like, wow, I have a lot of hatred towards that person. I wish they were. I've even heard it from people that I was surprised from. You know, people said, you know, I wish that person was dead. Christians, sometimes strong Christians. And you're like, what? But it shows you where's their strength really is. Is it just because of their mind? Because they know all these facts and know a lot of biblical truths possibly? Or is it their heart that's really strong? And it's their and their relationship with Jesus Christ is that strong? Maybe it's not. That's, that's why we can tell people by their fruits. If they have anger issues... That makes you question then, okay? Is there unforgiveness? Uh, do they see forgiveness as a weakness? Are they trying to protect themselves? Third, anger is not the solution. Like I said, anger, sometimes, this is why people do have anger sometimes, is because sometimes it works. You know, you better stop hurting me. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. And they keep saying, oh, I'm sorry. And then they try to change. And then they screw it. They hurt them again. I told you. Oh, yeah, okay. They try and try, and they'll never do it. They'll never do it. I think that's why no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I know sometimes, and in in my <laughs> me and Kristen get in things and stuff, and I think sometimes she feels like I'm, you know, trying to hurt her on purpose, and I, I think sometimes it feels like to me too. But we know, after we talk it through, that's not true. You know, we're not trying to hurt each other on purpose. Sometimes it, sometimes it feels like that, but that people are doing it on purpose. And maybe it is on some purpose. That still doesn't give us the right to hate on them and be angry at them because that, again, gives them the control. And that is never going to work because it I may mean, work for, like I always I see in other videos, sin works for, for the moment. Flesh in the control seems to work sometimes. It seems to, 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 to work, you know, in our lives. And it is a good way to cope in a lot of ways. You know, flesh can work for a lot of people. Look how successful people are in their flesh. Non-Christians, even Christians who are in their flesh can work really good. Or can look, you know, very um, healthy. But it's not. Jesus says, it's, you know, the Pharisees and Sadducees were perfect, it looks like. They were, they were untouchable. They were amazing. He said they were full of dead man's bones. Whitewashed tombs. It's because there was no relationship. They were, they were looking good in their own eyes, in other people's eyes, but not in God's eyes, which is most important, God's eyes. So if you're going to be a strong Christian, right here, baby, anger is not the solution, okay? If you're, 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 your life is full of anger and you're, getting, you're controlling people, it's not, I don't, you can be, you know, you can do whatever you want. It's not godly, you know, and sometimes that can lead you to bad things. And then, you know, me and Kristen will be those kind of issues with, because you know, it says if you have rage and malice and you have that lifestyle, that those people are go to hell. Okay. I don't care what you think. I don't think care if you think you're the strongest Christian in the world. If you are thinking that you're can be full of malice and rage towards people and you're like, but I read my Bible, I go to church and I believe in God. God, go, you get to heaven and there's many time, many people that'll say, oh, but I did this, this, and this in your name. Jesus says, I never knew you. Are you one of them? 
Just can't I just you know climb this out. That's what this is what the Bible says. Oh, you know, people say, well, I don't know. That's just some people. Are you sure? You want to take that chance? You want to take that chance that your anger is is in so controlling you that you're not able to have a relationship with God? That's what can happen. Is if anger is your solution, and it shouldn't be. So then, what's the answer? The answer is forgiveness, and looking at it as not a being a weakness. And then letting God forgive you and entering into his rest. We need to enter into God. I guess this one's a little more stronger because of the people that have anger issues need a little more of a strong voice on this. Okay? This is serious. This is where I get more, a little more strong because people who feel like they have control over their lives need a little bit of a wake-up call. Okay? It's not good. I don't care what you, you what you think your anger issues are, and you know, it can explain them away. It's not good. It's actually one of the more dangerous sins. <laughs> that and pride. Okay. So we need to enter. How do you do that? How do you get away from this? This is really a tough one sometimes because it works so well sometimes. Okay, or it seems to work. I should say, let God forgive you. First of all, it's like say, God, I'm sorry. I'm doing this. I don't even know how to change this. God, help to change me. Please forgive me and help to change me. That's Asking forgiveness means you're give, trying to give that up now. And, and to repent from it and say, God, you're going to have, you can't do it. God's going to have to help you change. He starts giving you revelation, okay? Fourth, allow God's love to change your heart and heal your soul. This is a, this sometimes can be a, a long-standing issue that you've done maybe since you were a kid. You know, and sometimes it means going back to some of those past things and asking forgiveness and saying, God, I'm sorry. I've controlled people this way all my life. Even when I was a kid, I remember this situation and that situation. And it was wrong. You you wanted to love on me. You wanted to take care of me. You wanted to be the one that's that comforts me, that stands up for me. Because there's many times where we feel like, well, we got to stand up for ourselves. If it's God, you know, Yes, we you know defending yourself um, in some cases okay, but what is what does it say? You know, don't uplift yourself before men, but let God uplift you. How does that fit in? It fits in when our attitude should always be that we don't try to defend ourselves. That's the first thing we should be thinking. I don't want to defend myself, God. So what do you want me to do? Now, Paul, Paul in his writings, he defended himself sometimes. He said, I don't like to do this, but I'm going to boast about this, this, and this. Because he's trying to point out something to people to let them realize that you don't, you, you can still trust me because I have the credentials here. But I don't take pride in it. I don't boast about this stuff so that I can feel good about myself. I do it because I want to let you know that it's not. Be, it's not that I. I, talk, I don't. Talk, I talk. About, I. I don't talk about this because I don't have these credentials. I don't talk about it because it's not important. But if I have to, I'll tell you that I mean I, I was this, 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 and this. Okay. So we can have confidence and we can defend ourselves if if it's need be. But it should never be in a sense that we are trying to prove something or trying to change people. It's hopefully it's just so that people can can um, cha be changed, okay? But that's not my job. You know, I like, for instance, let's say a person is like questioning of if I'm even a Christian or something, you know, oh, what you're saying. I'm like, well, I, you know, I've, I know the Bible and the Bible says this, this, and this, and this, you know, and, and so I know that this is true. And, and then I can come back and I feel pretty confident this is, and if they're still like, well, I still don't believe. I'm like, well, then that's fine. I'm not, I'm not bent out of shape all if you don't believe me. You know, or if somebody's questioning my Christianity or me listening to God, I'm like, I know I listen to God because he's confirmed to me this, this, and this, and this. And I can, you know, I'm defending myself in a sense that, well, I know this because of all the things that he's shown me in the Bible and stuff. And then it's a person still, well, you still don't believe in God. I'm like, okay. And then I can let it go. See, defending is only to help that person. If that person doesn't want to be helped, then they don't want to be helped. I don't care. It doesn't matter what they think. See, if you feel like it, you have to continually defend yourself even when they don't believe you, that's where the defending is wrong. Okay? You don't have to defend yourself to change the other person. Okay? 
You just defend them so that they can be changed. Hopefully they'll change. But if they don't, well, that's okay. That's where the difference is. Okay? It enters into sin when you feel like they have to be different towards you or have to change. That's the same with anger. If you're if you're voicing things because they have to change, it's wrong. If you're voicing things because of the fact that you're hoping they change, but if they don't, they don't, you know, then you just go to the Lord, I'm just gonna just trust you, Lord, then. That's the difference. That's when you're not in sin. When you're in sin when they have to change. Okay. It's, I'm not saying it's, it can be challenging when your people is hurting you, especially when you're close. I mean, some of our, me and Kristen, when we get into um, some, he just got, you know, arguments and stuff, it can be very challenging because we're feeling so hurt at the time. But one thing that's so nice about seeking God and being touched by God and entering into his love and peace is that we can always work it out. And we always come together and say, I'm sorry. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm just frustrated. And I know that we're not the solution. We're not the problem. The problem is our flesh. Each, each of our flesh. And the solution is God. That's it. And the solution isn't that we don't hurt each other. We're going to hurt each other. Okay? We're going to get upset each other. We're going we're gonna to fail each other. I mean, all these things. I'm, bam, 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 it's going to happen. Problem is, is, is you know, if it's anger, is forgiveness, and not, and not, not being angry, and trying to change the other person, and, and, and be, letting God forgive you, and to allow God's love to change your heart, and to heal your soul, and just to love on you of all the past hurts and all the past pains, and all the people that hurt you in the past. It's okay. You know, God wants to just love on you. You're, you're a, when you were hurt all those times, it was wrong. But God loves you. He loved you when you were a child. You're a special person then. You're a special person now. And you ha and God wants to use you. But if you're going to stay in this, he can't use you as much as he can. I mean, he's used people with anger issues. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he has. And he, it's been biblical, you know. Moses had an anger issue with someone. He did. I'm sure, I, I really believe that when he, there's a point where he struck the <laughs> struck the staff five times in the rock. He's only supposed to do two times, and he did it five. It was because he had an anger issue. Because <laughs> he wanted to control. He was frustrated. He felt like he should be able to do something instead of trusting God. And then he, he was punished. He says, you're not going to enter into the, in the promised land. Because of it. I'm sure it wasn't just that one time. Okay, It was an ongoing thing he probably was doing. You know, that he was not trusting God. And this was the final straw. He was like, this This just shows you how much you don't trust me. And so, even Moses, I mean, gosh, Moses is the one that came and met Jesus in transfiguration. I mean, the guy is like amazing. He's probably the one, he's probably closest to the guy. I don't know how close he is. But he's, I mean, like I said, he was in the um, in the Mount of Olives and Jesus um, was in the last days he was with, he was caught up with the Moses and I think it was Elijah or something. And Moses, and he was still reprimanded. <laughs> he, I think he had anger issues. Okay, so it's, don't, you're not alone in this. This is probably one of the harder ones, like I said. But it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be changed, especially if you don't allow God to change you. I mean, I, I really, really believe that Moses really fought this and was humbled a lot. Well, he saw God and he was humbled greatly by God. I mean, he realized how insignificant he was. Um, but it's a challenge. And so, but allow God's love, his love to change your heart. Okay? And heal your soul. And just feel loved and, and be let it happen. Sometimes the anger is the protection mechanism even against love and people loving you. Because if they can love you, they can hurt you. So now, what the their answer probably in that is, I sad to say, is that you're gonna probably have to start letting people hurt you, and be okay with that. That's probably the other issue there. That might be a little bit harder. Maybe, maybe first let love change your heart. Maybe let lo God love on you first, so you can start experiencing that as much as you can, and then maybe start realizing that okay, I guess if people hurt me, I can still can go to God. And he can love on me more. Just remember that when people that, maybe think first that. 
Oh, gosh, that person hurt me. Okay, that's right. I feel so, have God love me. Please, God, have love on me right now because I'm, this really hurts. Do, you know, do a little more next time. Next time, a little more, a little more. By the time you're like, man, I don't even feel that angry towards the person when they hurt me because you're letting that love in more and more. Okay? So God bless.